welcome to our demonstration of Ativio's Active Intelligence Engine. The purpose of this demonstration is to show you how the engine can ingest structured data and unstructured content into the same universal index and allow you to query across both and get back results in a unified interface. For the purposes of this demonstration, we've ingested over 100 years worth of baseball statistics along with 700,000 sports related news articles. All of this was ingested into the same universal index and all of the results you see will be coming back from that index. We'll begin with a search for player agent Scott Boris. The interesting thing about this search is that Scott Boris is, does not appear as an entity anywhere in our structured data. This is simply a text search being performed on all of the content that we've ingested. As we ingested that content, we were able to extract player names as entities from those articles, which allows us to join back into the structured data. This allows us to essentially derive a list of Scott Boris's most newsworthy players from the unstructured content. Through this join, the AIE is able to show aggregate information about the players Scott Boris represents, such as a breakdown of their countries of origin or their salaries. One key feature of the Active Intelligence Engine is the ability to recommend facets to be used as navigators through the results of your search. In this case, things such as people, the author of the article, or dates of the article can be used to refine your search. Text of the matching articles is presented in a familiar document list format with the matching terms highlighted. Player nicknames were extracted from the structured data and turned into synonyms for the player's real names. Query enhancement workflow allows us to expand nickname queries to include the player's real names. This allows the AIE to ask the question that the user really meant to ask. Of course, you can look up players using traditional keyword searches as well. For demonstration purposes, I'll show you what an AIE join query looks like. In this case, the application generates that query for you. A user would not typically be expected to write it. Notice that it looks very much like a SQL query, but it joins between structured tables and the unstructured store of content. Searching for a specific player brings back both detailed statistics about that player as well as matching articles. Across the top, you can see BI style graph showing key performance indicators over time. The data grid shows those detailed statistics year over year. And of course, beneath that, you see the news articles that match that player. Again, the user is able to navigate through the results by using facets or navigators that are generated on the fly. Because the AIE preserves the granular table structure, the user is able to perform calculations and interact with search results in a way that's not possible with legacy search solutions. For example, we can perform calculations using the precision of SQL, such as finding the sum or average of home runs over a player's career. At the same time, we can take advantage of the inherent fuzziness of search to do things like find players who have had similar years statistically. The AIE's relevancy profiles allow you to configure a different relevancy model to be used for each query. In this case, the most similar players get boosted to the top of the results list. Next, we'll aggregate player data across organizational structures to get a higher level view of a specific team's performance, financials, and media presence. Because the table structures of the fine-grained statistics are preserved but stored in an inverted index which is optimized for data retrieval, we can perform these calculations and join across new relationships in the data at query time without sacrificing performance. This saves us from having to perform these calculations and joins during a complex ETL phase which would require us to reload our data if we decided to change the formulas or the join keys. Again, the key performance indicators are presented in a graphical dashboard alongside headlines and summaries of the hits from the unstructured content, giving an up-to-the-minute view of the status of the team from all angles. Now we drill into detailed analytics 
allowing us to visually compare individual player performance at a glance across a variety of metrics. Each player is plotted as a dot on the graph using any numerical fact field in the data set as an axis. In addition to each dot's x and y coordinates, we can also use its size and color to represent facts about that player. Even more detail can be displayed by mousing over each player's dot. Because the AIE does not require you to define data schema up front or perform calculations ahead of time during an ETL phase, the user can select any fact field present in the data set to be used as an axis. Remember that all of the statistics that are being used to generate this graph are stored in the same universal index that contains all of the news articles as well. The only differences between these queries and the ones shown earlier are the levels at which the numbers are being rolled up. They all use the same query syntax, they all hit the same universal index, and they all query against the structured data and unstructured content in the same way. We have just chosen different display techniques for the different levels of aggregation. This graph shows that players who get more at-bats tend to drive in more runs. This isn't surprising, but we can immediately see that Alex Rodriguez stands out as the most efficient producer of RBIs on the team, making the most of every opportunity at the plate. Now let's ask a typical business intelligence question. Who are our highest value team members? The first step is to plot a performance metric, we'll start with home runs, against the cost metric, in this case salary. We see that A-Rod is still a top performer, but he's paid a premium. The high value players will be the ones in that magic quadrant in the lower right, high production for low cost. Predictably, there aren't many players in there because they're so rare. Of course, using home runs as your performance metric highlights your power hitters. That isn't necessarily the best overall measure of productivity. Let's look at hits as another performance metric. Now we see Derek Jeter leap to the front. However, he too is highly compensated. Glancing down at that high value quadrant shows us that Robinson Cano is by far the best value as a Yankee hitter. Hopefully this demonstration has helped you understand the power of unified information access that allows you to search your structured and unstructured information assets simultaneously and take advantage of the relationships between them. We thank you for your time. If you would like more information or to request a live demonstration, send an email to sales at ativio.com or fill out our demo request form at www.ativio.com slash demo.